<laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Room. That's a Tiger King. How very dare you, Tiger Queen? Yeah. What have you got for us today, Mike? Well, um, not that hideous shirt, but we've got an interesting story about an unusual relationship. Oh, nice. Mm. <laughs> oh, nice. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at the Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us. The TV for our website. And on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as names huff across the bottom of the screen, we get ready for this week's showbiz with Lee. <laughs> So were you were you a fan of George Michael when he was alive? And now that he's not with us, the legacy lives on. Yeah. Posthumous. He released songs after he died. He did. Yeah. Well, he didn't, but people did for him. Yeah, for him, because he couldn't for he some reason. Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I liked him not just as a musical artist, mm -hmm. but the way he's like his whole politics and the whole, you know, when he got caught cottaging. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cottage in a music video. Cottage in a music video. Yeah. Hmm. It's having sex uh, in toilets, Lee. Yeah, I know what that is. I know what that is. Um, <laughs> um, so, there's a there's a documentary coming out. Mm. I mean, it's been a couple of years since he died. Was it like 17, 18, 19, 20? One of those years, possibly. <laughs> um, <that he's laughs> I'm going to go with like 19, possibly, that he died. I don't know the facts. I just know he's not here. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> I like to research things. Um, so it's called George Michael, Freedom Uncut. Yeah. And it, <laughs> there's a picture of it, of the poster. Oh, um, right. It's going to be released. It's going to okay. be released to a global cinema event oh. on Wednesday, June the twenty second. Apparently, it's a deeply autobiographical, autobiographical. I don't know that word. Featuring, um, it's documented. Oh, hello, words. Um, <laughs> Words. Um, it's it's. it's, it's at... <laughs> Can't hear you over your shirt. Please speak up. He actually narrates it, so it was obviously he's not from you know obviously from beyond. Um, and then it died. And then it died. <laughs> um, who saw that coming? Um, it's it's <laughs> narrated by him before. It was what he was working on before he died. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So he talks about having two distinct sides of his life, the very public persona of, of his music career and his personal um, life that cameras never really saw. Um, I think we kind of really know most of it now, don't we? He liked the, he, he liked a doobie or five. He, he um, a doobie, a doobie, uh, a doobie or five? <laughs> a joint. Um, what, of pork? Yes. <laughs> he loved the Sunday roast, he did, did he? yeah. Oh, um, that's nice. So in 2016 is when he died. It says okay. here in my notes. So it notes. was similar time. Yeah, yeah. Um, 17, 18, so 19. None of those years. <laughs> none of those years at all. So it kind of, So this is him here in heaven. It's not. Oh, right, okay. it's, it's, um, it's, it's just. It's just. And him this in is his... where you insert the heroin needle. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's him in his in his cottage that he, he had built in his garden just to commemorate the, the moment. Um, so it... it div very it, voluptuous. Voluptu voluptuous. 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 Lots of gold. It's very yeah. tacky as well. Um, it delves into the turbulent period after Faith, okay. leading up to and during his making of Listen Without Prejudice, Volume 1, in 1990. So there's lots of like personal archives footage, mm -hmm. uh, never-before footage. Um, it's quite, quite interesting if you're a George Michael fan um, to go and see it. I probably will go and see it. Um... And probably at some point go, baby! Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's it's the new thing now, isn't it? That's, that's going to sit there in with you. In my ear. <laughs> yeah. just gone, he's, he's just made, he's just got like this, come on, come on, come on, come on. I think he was getting confused between <laughs> Karma Chameleon with, from um, Culture Club. And I think I think that we were going for, C -c 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 come on. That's what you were going for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Current as ever, What's this, this show. What's going What's on with What's going this? on with your face? With this blouse. No, not the blouse, um, the face. It's making weird noises. Why? You know, like when you do Britney and you do yeah. that weird... No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Right. Hey, no, that's George Michael. <laughs> Baby! <laughs> go, 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 come on. That's, all, that's what we did, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm go, just fascinated with the fact it's called Uncut. Was he, though? Well... We will only will perhaps that will be revealed. Well, maybe that that's the, the whole point. 
The whole point of it. Because when you told me we were going to cover off this story... Building up to his breasts. Yeah. (laughs) You told me we were covering off this thing called Uncut, right? And so I Googled it and nothing George Michael came up. Oh, okay. Well, you know... Hours of fun was had. It's going to be released communally in cinemas worldwide um, in June. So go see it. Um, So from from somebody with, with talent to somebody that doesn't really have much, if any. So... I'm a celebrity. They're branching oh, out. Huh? What? Huh? What? <laughs> um, there's going to be an I'm a Celebrity All-Star special coming to TV. So they're going to get people that not necessarily won, but had um, a big impact on the show over the thousand years it's been on TV. But apparently, and she's not happy, Katie Price has reportedly been snubbed from appearing in it. Okay. Because, so well, this is her, when she was originally in it, mm-hmm. when she met up with Peter Andre mm-hmm. um, and talked about his little acorn and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> the last thing I mean, but she did. She said he had an acorn. And he was like, I don't. And she went, hmm. Um, so she's she's 40, 43 now. Is 43? Mm. Goodness me. I know. Um, How what, is she? What they're saying is, is that she's too much of a liability to actually get her back on, on the show. So she was in it twice. So she was in it the first time with with Peter Andre, mm-hmm. and then she was in it again in 2009. So they brought her back, looking fresh. Um, and so they're saying there's no doubt that Katie makes great TV and was one of the standouts of I'm a Celebrity over the years, but she's too much of a liability for the show to cast it in the All-Stars version. Um, and she's like, I'm not. I did it properly this time. Mm. Um, so it's going to be filmed in South Africa. Why are you doing the accents again? Because that's how she talks. It really isn't. Um, it, it's, 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 fortunately, it's just a one-off. It's a standalone show, which will run in addition alongside the, the one that's coming back. To, so, the, so it's been two years in Wales the, the, because of the Rona. It's going back to Australia this year, probably. Okay. Um, so Channel 4 bosses have signed up Anton Deck, Yawn, um, to, to, to Channel do... Channel 4? Channel bosses. I thought it Channel Did I say four. Channel 4? Possibly. Um, so, but yeah. Move from the camp, so, apparently, the, <laughs> the campmates will be doing trials and living in the camp environment but with fresh and exciting new twists. And they will have a hand in their own destiny through a, a series of internal votes and challenges. Let's hope those new twists involve, like, cannibalism. Decapitation. Those kind of things. Yeah. That'll keep, keep us interested. Yeah, mm. so, so, Katie Price is going to be in it. Any news of who is going to be in it? Um, well, the, there's all these. Caitlin Jenner. She's been. I've been watching. Um, Celebrity Big Brother Australia that she's in. Oof. Vile human being. Oof. Stacey Solomon. Gillian McKeith. Because of her famous... Uh, when she faint, pretended to faint. Um, <laughs> turns in a box. Those kind of things. Um, <laughs> I think it's whoever's most desperate. Because you know I always refer to it as I was a celebrity, get me a career. Yeah. Mm. I think what, who's got the moolah who, who needs it who wants it who's going to get it that'll Martin be in the kitchen. did she do it I don't know I don't watch it I don't think she ever did it she needs the money yeah I mean, no she's got goggle box didn't it huh? no she's got goggle box no yeah mm, anyway it'll be on telly at some point you watch it uh, if you want if you yeah, want yeah no skin off my nest um, so let's move <laughs> that was a recommendation I don't care if you do and I don't care if you don't um Neil Patrick Harris, he's an actor. He's a homosexual actor. He doesn't act like a homosexual. In some, yeah, he does in some. In some, he's straight. It's versatile. Um, so this well, he's summer, not top and bottom. You just have to be versatile. So he yeah. he is going to be starring in um, a new uh, Netflix show called Uncoupled this very summer. Ooh. So it's set in um, the Big Apple, and he plays at the Big Apple. Like, like it's just in the Big Apple. It's set in, in New York City. Okay. NYC. Um, and it's all about how he is a um, happily married um, gay man that all of a sudden his life comes crashing around when he finds out that his husband's been having an affair. They get divorced. Um, and it's, you know, it's all about a gentleman, a homosexual gentleman of, of perhaps a more mature um, outlook on life um, and what happens. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's produced by the same guy who does Sex in the City. And Emily in Paris. So, I loved Emily in Paris. Did you watch Emily in Paris? No, because for me, there's only one Emily that deserves to be in Paris. And that's from The Devil's Wear Prada. Okay. That Emily should have been in Paris. Okay. Not Andy. Um, yeah. So I, I was kind of like going, ooh, niche. 
Um, <laughs> it's, what? Oh, niche. Was a niche reference that? Mine was, yeah. Mm. Neil Patrick Harris has had a long career. He has. It says here in TV and film. Um, <laughs> um, do you remember? We've got a picture of him as Doogie Howser, MD, when he was a child. Do you not remember Doogie Howser? No. He played a child doctor. Okay. That was like one of these like like. I don't know what the word is, like a protege. He 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 played he played a, a kid that was sort of like really intelligent okay. and became a doctor and was in the hospital being a doctor. Okay, what um, was this on? It was on BBC One about three hundred years ago. Was it Doogie Howser was it MD? In the 80s? It was kind of like late eighties, early nineties. Yeah. Oh. That's the end of this week's showbiz news. Oh, um, thanks for that, Lee. Always nice to know that you know Neil Patrick Harris is still going and going and going. And going. You're welcome. But stick around as next. It's Mike with the buzz. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's have him bring us the buzz. <laughs> How gay is your money, Lee? How gay is my money? How gay is your money? Wow. I put it in a hole and I f*** it. <laughs> <laughs> no, how promiscuous is your money? Anyway, well, this is... I've got a story here about news that um, the Royal Mint... OK. ...are releasing a pride 50 pence coin. <sighs> what, what are you saying for, Deep Sigh? Yeah, go on, Mike. I'll listen to the information before I right, okay. before I speak about my opinions. So it's, it's to celebrate the 50 years of Pride. Okay. Right? So they're celebrating it um, by minting a special coin. Minting a special coin. Minting a special... That's what they call making a, a coin. Mm -hmm. Minting it. I'm not going to dip it in, like, a mint solution. Ooh, tea. Um, so they're going to be going... Uh, it's got the rainbow flag on it, uh, but it's not just the standard one, it's the progress flag. Okay. So it's got the chevrons on it as well, mm -hmm. which is good. Why, why are you humming? It's... Yeah. Why? That's what I'm just going to say. Why, why, do, why do we need a 50 pence piece covered in rainbows? Why not? And how much is it? I know it's 50p. <laughs> it's a 50 pence But these, they're, they're like often more, aren't they? You, 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 can, you, you can buy them as well from the mint. For how much? Don't know. Mm. They don't share that figure. You have to you have to apply to get one. Oh right, okay. okay. Um, it's not only a celebration of Pride in the UK, but it's a, a tribute to the indomitable spirit of the UK LGBTQ plus community. Is what they've said. Mm. Yeah, I think I think it's nice that you know they're recognising a coin because other things that have been recognised as a coin. Yes. Yeah, like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thunderbirds. <laughs> All those vitally important things. The Queen. Mm. Every single one's got her face on it. She's a greedy bitch. Exactly. It's like, mm. oh, that's my face. Is, it, is, is money going to charities? Or are they just... They're, they're celebrating it. Oh, that's it. Just celebrating it. It's one of these where... It's like Pride Month, so let's slap a rainbow on everything. And then yeah. at the end of Pride, forget it. They'll, they'll have a team of people scraping them rainbows off. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> I mean, what I want to know is, if it's so LGBT inclusive, why isn't the Queen sucking on a <laughs> on the other side? Because that, would, because that would be the Queen doing it, which would be a heterosexual act. Yeah, but they could put a fanny there. Why is the Queen not muff diving, is what you asked there? Why? Well, that's not... An octogenarian <laughs> eating minge, is what you want to see out of your money? Why not? Let's go, let's go full... F embrace the whole thing. I just, I feel, I feel that, you know, I'm a cynical old hag, and um, I, I just find it a little bit cynical. Okay, I, I think, you know, at this time, when we've got the Conservative government in, who aren't exactly LGBTQ plus friendly. Yeah, but do they, do they, they won't even know what a 50 pence piece looks like. No, they will. <laughs> Or when they steal them. Well, they snatch them off other people. Yeah. Snatch them off the poor people. Yeah, exactly. It's mine now. Poor gay people. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, 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 no. I mean, anyway, who uses who uses who uses coins anyway nowadays? Slot who, machines. Who uses coins? Who uses them? Who uses <laughs> them? <laughs> the rage about money here. <laughs> no, I just have a, like recently uh -huh. somebody has released a now that's what I call Pride CD. 
Right. Which is just a straight person going, right, what are the gayest songs I can think of out of the top of my head? You see, I think that... Because I've already got something on my phone that I would say counts as, you know... What's the name of that top up compilation? <laughs> power bops for power bottles. <laughs> <laughs> right. And... Splendid bops for mask dumb tops. <laughs> <laughs> so it already exists. They don't need to do it. It's really no, real. No, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you is it just like four minutes of heavy groaning <laughs> to a disco Oh no, beat. these are proper playlists. <laughs> so, so for tops, we've got Boys by Charlie XCX. Okay. All right. Um, Kiss It Better by Rihanna, Untouched by the Veronicas, Disco Tits by Love Toe. At least you have got some some relatively... Supercut by Lord. ...updated LGBTQ plus artists, whereas this yeah. has kind of got the old, you know, bit of Kylie... But a share, share the believe, believe the Almighty make. It's just like God. Oh, have they got the um, girls lad mega mix? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they just, girl. it's just useless. Yeah. Anyway, let's, Shall let's we move on. Let's move on before I burst a blood vessel. Okay. You know when you're going to sleep at night in your coffin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I pull that metal, that metal, that pull, pull that 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 stone, crypt coffin. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, do you make up little fantasies in your head? Oh, when well, like, I'm going to sleep? Just before you go to sleep, so like making up scenarios and things No, because I'm not five. By the time I go to sleep, I'm just grateful that another day's over. <laughs> it's like wondering whether you're going to wake up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. um, Pray for the light of a new day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Lee, who is a writer from Manchester. Louis. Lee. It's not me. Not you. No. No, from, from Manchester. Um, says she's been making up scenarios in her head ever since she was a teenager. <laughs> when she was younger, she used to make up stories about characters from people from real life. And then now it's about having arguments with people that she wish she would have had at work. Oh, sometimes I do that. Okay, so you do do it then. Not, when, not when I'm going to bed. <laughs> you just do it randomly. No, I do it in the car. I like, I love it having a conversation and then I'll play the other person's part because that's what I want them to say. Or what they should have said, but they actually they didn't say it. Right. Okay, well, a psychiatrist has been involved in this <laughs> um, and said it's actually a coping mechanism. Well, good, well done. Yeah, and it's where if you've got a stressful situation, doing that makes it a less stressful situation. Okay. Do you make up little stories when you go to sleep? Yes, but they always involve nakedness. And, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I don't see a problem with that. So, has she put, has she put them in a book or something? She's not, no, she just basically said, this well, is what's what the point happens. then? What? What's she just telling people for? Because other people do it too. So she's gone to a psychiatrist and said, look, this is what's happening. And the psychiatrist is going, no, this is how we deal with stress. And yes. This is what it's for. <laughs> if you're not going to put in a product and sell it, what's the point? Okay. She... I have dreams. We'll put it in a book, babes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's already been done. Someone, yeah. someone said that I have a dream. Stories that didn't like, you know, like reminisce, you know, what stuff like you know, put in a book, hon. <laughs> everything's said, a, everything's a, was, a product. Was, um, yeah, something slightly different. <laughs> anyway, um, and if you want to put something in a book, um, you can always find us on social media as well at We Could TV. I'm going to move on to our story of the week. Yay. Now, this is about a, a fellow celebrity. A fellow celebrity. Fellow celebrity. <laughs> right over this. Um, how do you feel about Philip Schofield? Oh. <laughs> what's your problem with what's your beef with Philip Schofield what's my beef with Philip Schofield what's your beef he's just a smug d <laughs> <laughs> he just is me 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 my television program I just have a problem with him right okay so he was gay he's gay right that's fine he kept it secret for such a long time, and the only reason he came out was because somebody was threatening to say, we're going to tell people that you're gay. So all of a sudden it was like, the episode of this morning when he cried on the sofa and Holly Willoughby gave him a hug. Oh! And that's all I'm going to say. This story is about Philip Schofield, who's struggling to keep a straight face, mm -hmm. right? As a guest on This Morning, was talking about her relationship with her alien boyfriend. Okay. Okay, and how she's scared that if she has sex with him, it will kill her. 
Is that, is that that's, her boyfriend? That, that's not her boyfriend. <laughs> that's a representation of her boyfriend because she didn't want to bring the boyfriend on the show oh. in case the FBI took him to Area 51. To probe him. So they're trying to keep his anonymity. Okay. Yes. What will happen if she has sex with him? She's scared that he, he, will, he will kill her. Oh, big dick? Just because their anatomy is very different. Oh. Yes. Big so, alien dick. B-A-D. B-A-D. <laughs> yeah, bad. <laughs> She's going bad. <laughs> Um, so this lady, who is called um, Abby Bella, is a US actress, um, who goes by her, na her name, Emanuela Rose. Oh, that's nice. Is that a porn name? That's a name that's closer to his name. Oh. So she goes by that because he doesn't actually have a name. Oh. So as, as Philip Schofield was interviewing this woman, he had a range of emotions um, that we've got a picture of now. So he's trying to understand what she's saying. He's trying to believe her. He's trying not to laugh at her. Oh, he's aged, hasn't he? <laughs> he has aged horribly. <laughs> he has aged horribly, yes. Oh, he's aged horribly. Yes. Um, but while she's sort of like talking about the nature of a relationship and how he's taken her on, he's gone on dates, but he doesn't really know what a date is. The alien? Yeah. Okay. You're yeah, not Philip Schofield. <laughs> She's not kidnapped Philip Schofield. You're, you're my alien now, Philip. Because um, that'd be weird. Um, yeah, he was just trying to keep a straight face. Did she show a picture of the alien? No, because she wants to keep his anonymity. Okay. Is it is it the alien off Family Guy? No, American Dad. Roger. Roger the alien. Hey! <laughs> um, <laughs> that was kind of a half arse attempt. Hey, I'm alien. No, I can't do it. And that's not all for the buzz this week. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. That's, that's great. I'm still not a fan of Philip Schofield, but, you know, what's one man's... You know, whatever. Anyway, coming up, stay with us, because we've got our Game of the Week. You're watching Chewing the Cod. This week we are playing Uza Kazoo, and that is one for our very own stunning linguist, Mike. So off you pop. Unusually nice for you. Well, <laughs> that hurt my head. Game of the week. So, Mike, are you ready to bestow upon the world your first thing? So eloquent. Well, I'm going to give you t two options today. Lee. Oh. We have two playlists you can choose from. Oh. You can either choose from the world-renowned Power Bops for Power Bottoms or Splendid Bops for Masked on Tops. Oh, so it's either Power Bops for Power Bottoms uh -huh. or Bangers for Dom Tops. No, Splendid Bops for Masked on Tops. I think we'll go for Splendid Bops for Dom Tops. Okay. Because that works for you, doesn't it? So, are you ready? Shame me. Is it, is it a modern one? It's one you should know. Is it a modern one? It's one you should know. I don't know it. I it it's Ray of Light by Madonna. It's who? Ray of Light by Madonna. Oh, no, I didn't get it. Anna Friel, like I just got home, Anna Friel. What's that got to do with being a dumb top? It's on the playlist. It's just on the play. There's no rhyme or reason, it's just on the playlist. It's on the playlist. Play it's on the, on the play playlist. <laughs> it's on the playlist. Okay. Limp wrist. Next one. Next. Sounds familiar, but I, I can't. 
Give me a clue. <laughs> it's a cover of a Swedish song. Sang by someone from Neighbours. Oh. Da, 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 da. From Neighbours. <laughs> oh. Isn't that not a NABBA? Isn't Natalie Umbrugula's tone isn't a NABBA cover? No, I didn't say it was a NABBA cover. I said it was a Swedish cover. Swedish cover. Oh, OK. Natalie Umbrugula. And? Tone. Yes, correct. That makes That's sense. Horrible but... make... Yeah, that makes horrible sense. <laughs> <laughs> OK, are you ready? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm going to have to have clues. <laughs> you have to have clues. Okay. Um, it's a card game. Poker face. Yes. It's poker face. I said I don't recognize I don't recognize what you're singing. Well, that's a you problem. But that's the then the clues do help. They do. Yes. A bit like being a dumb top. <laughs> or the clues help. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you have to tell me whether you want me to be choked or not. Yeah, <laughs> what is okay. a dumb top? What? If you have to ask, you should never know. The only girl in the world by Rihanna. It is indeed only girl. Yes, by <clears throat> Rihanna. But do you sing it like I'm the only bottom in the world? Oh, because that's not true. Oh no. Okay. Especially in Manchester. Mm -hmm. Bottoms, as far as you can see. It's a festival of bottoms. Festival of bottoms. Festival of bottoms. Is it Should I Put a Ring on It by Beyonce? Single Ladies by Beyonce, yeah. Is it Single Ladies? Oh. Got Single Ladies, put a ring on it. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just did a fart. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even a subtle one, he did a full lead. Oh, what about an anaconda? Yeah. By um, the human Minaj. Indeed it is, yeah. So this one, I'm not sure why it's on the, uh, this playlist, but anyway. Christmas song, yeah, by Mariah Carey. Why have you got that on there? You hate it. I, I didn't. Know it's there. For, for tops, anyway. Uh -oh. Pardon me. Oh, very gassy. It's, it's not going out one end. It's going out somewhere. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Is it Ken Lee? Ken Lee? Ken Lee! Ken Lee! Yeah. 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 Well, over the, over the noise of, of downstairs and wrapping their sandwiches from their parchment paper, um, I, I, I'm going to say Jolene. It was. By I, Dolly Parton. It was indeed Jolene by Dolly Parton. Do you play that when you're being bombed? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not going to share any more than that. <laughs> No. Clue. No. no. You want a clue, is that? Yeah. Um, it's a hairdressing shop. It's a hairdressing shop? Yeah. I don't know, Mike. Supercut by Lord. Oh, it's too hip for me, dear. <laughs> what supercuts? Lordy. It's what All right. called Lordy, Lordy. Lord. 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 I don't know her. No, you don't know her. I don't know her tunes. <laughs> Did another modern one? A little bit. Is it by Tovlo or somebody? No. Is it by um is it by Engelbert Humperdinck? Modern music by Engelbert Humperdinck, yeah. Yeah. Uh no. You know when you you're finishing a text message? Yeah. And you put kiss. Yeah. And you accidentally put the wrong letter and then another kiss. What would that say? XOX. Charlie XOX. Close. X kiss X. Charlie X C X and X boys. <clears throat> yeah, so that. So, that was that. And after this quick break, it's that science that is. Welcome back to Chewing the Cod. Now it's that part of the show. It's that science that is. That science that is. So I just realised, Lee, that of all that science that is, we've only really done one that's explodey. Well, it didn't really explode though, did it? Well, it did gunpowder. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, today we're going to be talking about your body. I don't want to be talking about my body. Well, it, it's, you know how it's got tubes in it? It's got what? Tubes. Yeah. Filled with tubes. <laughs> you said cheese. <laughs> we're not talking about your penis. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I slipped that one in. But when, you, when you're talking about your body, you've got tubes inside. So like in your nose, you've got a tube that goes up and a tube that comes down. Mm -hmm. But did you know that your whole th your whole nose was actually a loop? It's one big tube with a hole at the top. I didn't, but now I do. See, you're learning things. That's science. Not saying the last bit, because then look up to the credits. Yeah. Well, and you're aware of what douching is, aren't you? You know about douching, right? Yes. Squirting water up, you clean it out and make it ready for woo, fun times. I'm not, I'm not douching on camera, Mike. Not again, no. Um, but today we're going to do, so, uh, we're going to douche your nose. I'm not doing that either. Why not? It, I will feel like I'm drowning. You, no, if you do it properly, you don't. 
Okay, so we're going to teach you how to properly flush your sinus sinuses. I want to flush my sinuses out. But well, you've been all snotty all the way through the show. Yeah, but I don't want to flush them out. Why not? Get rid of all the snot. <sighs> so, shall we just prepare the solution to start with? Oh, if you must. Yeah, because otherwise it's nine minutes of just that they're going, I'm not going. <laughs> so, you have a, a nasal douching bottle. Yeah. Yeah. If you unscrew the top, it's new, it's unused, it's been, it's coming plastic ready for you to use. What do I do? So you take the top off. So just a screw. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now the water in there, it's just water at the moment, but that is at 37 degrees C, so when you hold it, it's slightly warm. It is slightly warm, yeah, Mike, yeah. it's pleasant. Yeah. It's like holding a, 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 a phallus. Um, and what you need to do is you need to insert a sachet of nasal rinse salts. And what this does is it makes your normal tap water into saline solution. Okay? So if you pop that in, because you should never flush your nose out with just normal water. Because although your body is made up of water, it's always slightly salty. Or never flush your nose out full stop. Well, th then you wouldn't be flushing your nose out, would you? But I don't want... I'm... <laughs> What is the point in flushing your nose out? So it gets rid of everything that you've got stuck up there. So things like hay fever is quite prevalent this year. Lots of hay fever going about. Mm -hmm. So it helps just to get rid of all the pollen and things that are stuck in the mucus. <coughs> there we go. And then you pop your lid on and you give it a shake. Now I've got a cap, but you don't. So you have to put your finger over the hole to stop it spurting everywhere. Okay. I just give it a shake to mix it all up. <laughs> I'm shaking it backwards and forwards, you're wanking it off. Oh! <laughs> and then you've got a nice sailing solution when it's all mixed in. Oh! Did it, did it get excited? Spurted. Oh, well, yes. Um, so now, the, the trick with this is when you're inserting it, you need to bring your head forward and to the side so that it has a natural flow passage. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you breathe through your mouth. The downside of breathing through your mouth is that a small particle may come out of your mouth as well. I've given you a towel to clean up the mess. Where you go then, babes? Yeah, I'm going to. So off it comes. All right, and now at the bottom of these bottles, there's a little little button. Mm -hmm. right, that allows the airflow to come out, so it doesn't leak until I press the button. Yeah, mine does. It's pissing everywhere, press Mike. The, press the button. Oh! <laughs> Mine's faulty. Oh, okay, well, you'll just have to hold it for that for a minute, then. You've given me faulty equipment. I'm not sure. <laughs> Literally, well, I, I am not... I test it, because it's brand new. <laughs> <laughs> so you pop it up your nose, like that. Okay, put your head forward and to the side. And when I press the button, the fluid's going to go up this nostril, through my sinuses, out that nostril. <laughs> and into the bowl. Are you ready? Where you go. Knock yourself out. I'm not going to knock myself out. Just go. Okay. Oh. That's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. No. It's flushing my nose out. And the problem I've got is I'm actually really bugged up in this nostril. Ah. Oh. They just have to get all that liquid all the way through. This is attractive, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm leaking liquid from every orifice of my face. Oh, yeah. And then when you're done, you've got nice clear nostrils. Right. Yeah. Would you like to have a go, Lee? No. Are you sure? Absolutely <laughs> positive. I am not being filmed <laughs> <laughs> shoving a hamster feeding bottle <laughs> up my nose and it dripping. Don't make me laugh. I'm drowning. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're making me laugh. I wasn't breathing. I was laughing. I am... The... <sighs> <laughs> there is, there, it's not happening. Oh, because it's I'm not. I'm not. I, I, I you know, I just, I just. 
No. What? Oh. No. 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 Gallery. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm not. No. <laughs> so why why are you not waterboarding yourself, Lee? I don't want to. One, it's broken. <laughs> it's not broken. Look, it's pissing all over the place. So stick up your nose, it's already doing it for you. Look, pissing everywhere. I'm not, I'm not, no. I am not having my televisual legacy. <laughs> legacy! <laughs> <laughs> Water pouring out of my nostril <laughs> over a bowl. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I would rather eat a kangaroo anus. And that does not mean that next... <laughs> <laughs> that was just words. <laughs> so, so next said. we're going to be um, eating kangaroo anuses, aren't we, Lee? <sighs> what, why? Why did you... Well, now, now, you see, my hay fever feels so much better now. Oh, great. I feel like I can breathe and... Yeah, Wonderful. Yeah. I'm just going to carry on just sniffing it all back. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all phlegmy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I just don't want to. Oh, okay. Well, he doesn't want to, but that's science, that is. That's science, that is. So, so why have you not done that? Because I don't want to squirt warm water <laughs> up my nose and have it filmed on television because <laughs> you looked amazingly attractive doing it. Uh-huh. I don't think I could better it. Uh huh. You see, I could see myself in the monitor, so I know what I look like. It was clear. There was nothing untoward coming out. No, no, because it's just it, it as it dissolves the mucusy stuff. Nice. Yeah, well, it's clear, so it comes out. It's not like when you see all YouTube videos, and you get big green blobs coming out. And I don't watch YouTube videos of people doing that. Surprisingly enough. But you watch Doctor Pimple Popper. Nope. Watch Doctor Pimple Popper. I, I'm aware of it. <laughs> it it makes me it makes me heave. Why? Because it's vile. It's only people having things Yeah, pop. but you don't need to film it. Just go and do it. <laughs> Just go and have it done and go home. Don't don't be putting your pustules on television. <laughs> oh, it makes me heat. It makes me heat. The only one that I want... Because in the daytime, mm -hmm. when they show it, they're not allowed to show the gore, uh -huh. so they blur it out when she's cutting into people. There was a woman, she had a f***ing horn on her head. <laughs> Under her hair. She's been, she been putting it in a bun for 20 years to hide it. It literally was a goat's horn coming out of her head. And that's normal, apparently. What is, what's the matter with that? Cut it out. Cut it out. She put it on the wall. She didn't do that, but she could put her hair down because she didn't have a huge horn. Ah! Oh. <laughs> she can go on for another 20 minutes. She's just gone about ranting about a woman having a horn. She did. <laughs> a subcutian. Sub Subcutaneous. Growth. Yeah. That looked like a f***ing ram's horn. <laughs> oh. That's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media. It's at The Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And, of course, on YouTube and podcast services, just search for Chewing The Cud and hit subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. No. See, no, because you're not going to... No, is it? You're not. That you're used to that. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs>